So how are you doing tonight, Tara? Not too bad. Um, I, I was actually worried I was going to have to bow out at the last minute because Peggy had a total freak out. She got like something in her mouth and was just, like <laughs> literally just running around the house, freaking out and pawing at her face and licking. And we caught her twice and looked in her mouth and nothing was wrong. And she was just wigging out. And then Dottie was freaking out because Peggy was freaking out. And it's now they're both cats. okay. Life with cats. Yeah. She got something in her mouth that she didn't like, whether it was a bug or something that tasted bad or what. But she spent about an hour just wigging the fuck out. Well, that's how you learn. You put things in your mouth and things happen and you learn. Yeah. That's how you learn in life. That's that's the story of my dating history. <laughs> but uh, but they're both over on the other tower that is not in the shot, just chilling out right now. And I'm not inclined to bother them since we had a bit of a freak out. So you don't want me to sing. You don't. <laughs> You'll you'll all log off immediately if I start to fucking sing. Trust me. Oh, what are you doing? What are you doing? Oh, look at that fluffy belly. The belly. That fluffy belly. Scratch your belly. Yeah. Belly scratch. You want to go now? Do you want to go? I like that Grady's kind of slightly cross-eyed. He's not though. It just looks that way when he gets when his eyes go like this. It looks that I way. I know. Like, I know, but I love it. Donnie gets that <sighs> one too, where she looks kind of weirdly cross-eyed, but she's not either. I don't understand that, but so here we are tonight, sitting on the eve of destruction. Very excited for the season finale of America. <sighs> I haven't heard yet whether we're getting picked up for next season, so it might be the series finale. Yeah, it might be. We'll We'll find out if we're getting picked up again. Hopefully it doesn't end on a cliffhanger. I'm so glad it's almost fucking over, though. You realize it's not, though. No, no, it's not. We're, we're just we're just kind of kidding ourselves into saying it's over, but it's not really. It's just because if Trump wins, welcome to post-apocalyptic shit show America. If Clinton wins, welcome to the angry white man with guns uprising. Yeah. And possible civil war. Like... It's and yeah. at least four years of congressional investigations and time wasting. Like it's not over. One one particularly horrible phase is over tomorrow, and then a whole new horrible phase begins. God damn it all. I kind of think tomorrow what we're really choosing is whether we all die in the new civil war. Because all the angry white men with guns will rise up against a vagina running the country. Or World War Three, Because Trump. I think we're just choosing the form of our destroyer, really. So how are you? Sorry, was that a downer? A little bit. Sorry. Oh, but that's okay because, hey, we've got the news. Yay. Yes, I do think Clinton won't start World War III, but I ain't gonna, I'm about to get in a political argument with y'all instead of doing the bit. I don't think Nash would appreciate that. No, because that's not how I make my money. Right. Got dollar dollar bills, y'all. Y'all can find me on Twitter and fight with me about it there. Which I, I, you can't, and you can find me on Twitter and leave me the hell alone. I'm sure I'll have like 16 angry Trump fans in my Twitter tonight. Like, how dare you? Killary's a criminal. Killary for prison. And I'll be like, you're adorable. Go to bed. Hey, you know what? We'll get to that in a second. Uh, each week. Catherine, the Radio Dead Air audience, go out on the worldwide interweb, find all sorts of horrible stuff, and bring it back here for a little segment we like to call What the Fuck is Wrong with You? And speaking of Trump supporters, well, it's timely, and it's, it's going to start us off tonight. God help us. So, um, obviously it is not okay to go into someone's lawn and destroy their political signs whichever however no. you feel about it it's not cool it's not your property it's not your shit you they are allowed to whatever opinion they like however yeah. smart or however stupid that's america 
you hate Hillary Clinton, don't vote for her. You hate Donald Trump, don't vote for him. You don't fuck with people's stuff because they have the right to have that stuff and to put it on their lawn. However, what they do not have the right to do is this. Trump backer arrested on weapons charges, cops, man pointed gun at children over signs. <sighs> Michigan man who suspected uh, neighborhood children of destroying his Donald Trump lawn signs was arrested Saturday night after he held the youths at gunpoint till police responded to a 911 call. This is, by the way, what I mean about the new civil war. Because hmm. crazy fucking white men with guns think that that's the answer to everything. This is not a proportionate response. Give them paper cuts. You want to teach them a lesson about stealing your signs. According to cops, they don't do that. That's child abuse. But. Yeah. According to cops, Michael Kubek, 56, alleged that a group of kids had destroyed his political yard signs and were clearly running away from his residence in Allen Park, a Detroit suburb. Responding officers found six children, ages 12 to 14, seated in the grass, and Mr. Kubek was standing over them, cursing and yelling. While Kubek, seen it right, accused the children of damaging his Trump campaign signs, he acknowledged that quote he didn't witness them do it. During police questioning, the children said that Quebec chased them, accused them of damaging his signs. Each juvenile said that Quebec pulled out a pistol and was pointing it at them. Confronted with these accounts, Quebec copped to pointing a 9mm pistol at the children, came in quote, claiming, quote, he felt threatened by the juveniles because he was outnumbered. Quebec added he sought to scare the children by brandishing the weapon, which he said was unloaded at the time. Where do we even fucking start? I don't fucking know. Like, guns? You, you don't get to point guns at people. Guns are not a remote control for no. life. Like, they annoyed me is not a justification for pointing a fucking gun at people. Guns are not a remote control for like, life. I, I've never shot a gun. The people I know who have, the thing... The, you're not supposed to point a gun, as I understand it, correct me if I'm wrong, at anything you don't intend to kill. The rule is you treat every gun as loaded, even an unloaded gun. You treat it as a loaded gun. Yeah. And you don't like, point it at 12-year-olds! Dan has a few guns. I'm a bleeding heart hippie liberal who doesn't like guns. He pulled them out one day and showed them to me, just like, these are the guns. They won't bite you. And I picked it up and I picked it up in such a way that the barrel was pointed at him. And he immediately, like on instinct, like picked it up and pointed it the other way. And it wasn't loaded. It wasn't even assembled. Like <sighs> this over your, your, you know what? You don't at children over a lawn sign. You have to understand in life, shit is not going to go the way you want it to. People are going to do asshole things because people are assholes sometimes. And there's sometimes they're going to get away with it because that's life. Yeah. You don't get everything exactly the way you want, exactly how you want it. Just because you don't doesn't mean you get to, it does not entitle you to start picking up a weapon and pointing it at everybody who has offended you. No. That's not how we operate. That's, that's Mad Max rules, okay? And, you know, unless you, you really feel good about being lorded over by a man in, in in weird headgear and a diaper. That's not where we should be heading. No. Of course, you may like being lo over, lorded over by a man in weird headgear and a diaper, but we call that a fetish. And, you know, whatever and you do... You should keep that to yourself. Right. It's not a form of government. What? <laughs> oh. Okay, well, moving like, on. Like, we're all into our shit, but that doesn't make it a form of government. Yeah. Moving on, however, we, uh, we to, of course, Halloween. We, we always have the, we ha last week we had our Hookerween special, the best of the worst of Halloween costumes. That only Somebody counts. Somebody yelled at us, by the way, for kink shaming because of the pilgrim costume. Because apparently that's a fetish and we were kink shaming. Hey, you know what? I don't. I'm I here if you want to fuck a pilgrim. I didn't know that because I don't read the comments for exactly that reason. 
Fuck a pilgrim, you want to fuck a pilgrim. We don't care. I let you read the comments. You get some sort of strange enjoyment from fucking with idiots on the internet. But that o- our, our bit only accounts for store-bought costumes. Yes. Not for shit. We don't have a DIY category yet. Well, we have an entry this week. Every fucking year. Every fucking, every fucking year. Blackface? How did you guess? How did you fucking guess? And of course, this is, this is blackface plus. Cheers offensive costume. White college student dresses as Bill Cosby in blackface. Why would you want to be Bill Cosby at this point in his career? I know. Brock Denton, who until recently attended. Why the... is it always assholes named Brock? Brock. No, I like no, there is I like Brock Sampson on Venture Brothers, though. They're not always assholes. They're not. 2016 is the year everybody should stop naming their kid Brock because he's going to grow up to be a dick bag. Or he's going to grow up to be a Swedish murder machine like on the Venture Brothers. That's a cartoon uh, and it's not real life. <laughs> I wish it was, because then Hunter S. Thompson would be alive. Anyway, Brock Denton, who until recently attended the University of Central Arkansas, big surprise, where he had pledged to a brother of the Sigma Tau Gamma fraternity. The sophomore decided to dress as Bill Cosby, a famous comedian who had been accused of sexual misconduct of various forms by at least 58 women, for a party that his fraternity threw on Friday in Conway, Arkansas. Denton, who is white, covered his skin in black paint. In other words, he dressed in blackface. I love how the article is just spelling that shit out. Someone is padding their word count. Then he posted a photograph of the seemingly purposefully offensive costume to his Instagram account with the caption, quote, it was a bold night. From there, the photograph went viral. Wildfire outrage spread voraciously. Denton posted a long apology on his Instagram, which is set to private. Uh, the Echo, UCA student newspaper, captured an image of it. In it, he wrote, I honestly, I can honestly say I've never heard of blackface before until today. Really? Well, believe me or don't, but at this point, all I can do is be truthful. We don't. You live in the American South. He had never heard of blackface until today. Dan, what was the name of that restaurant? You used to go to that you realized as a grown up was totally racist. Sambo's. That's yeah. That one is another one that yeah. I yeah. used to go there all the time, and that that depiction was all over the restaurant. And as a grown up, you was like, man, that was really fucked up. I didn't realize that as a little kid. No, it was my mother who went. No, no, it's not racist. And then I started talking her through it, and at some point she went, "Oh my god." <laughs> You live in the American South, you've seen blackface. And not just blackface, to to combine that with the Bill Cosby thing. Yeah. Are you, look? I honestly- Here's you, the thing I never understand about this. Like, you could just, you don't, if you want to go in costume as a prominent black person or character, you can do that and just not do the blackface. Like Adam Sandler used to do Bill Cosby on SNL. You know what he did? He put chalk in his hair and wore an ugly sweater. And that's Adam Sandler. Right. When like, Adam's not exactly a bastion of good taste. You know? And Adam's, even Adam Sandler, look at the blackface and went, that's a bridge too far. Bridge too right. fucking far. So, like, you could just not do that part and still have your costume. But not, not only that, aside from the blackface, it's Bill Cosby. Yeah. So you have Bill Cosby in blackface. Were you expecting to just be like, oh, women are going to be all over me tonight. They're going to love this. I mean, their drinks are. Their drinks are going to be all over you. Yeah, probably. Yeah. Yeah. Because... One one wonders if this was some sort of hazing. Yeah, you got to do the blackface tonight. I don't want to do black... You got to. I don't want it. You got to. No, just how can you not know? How can you not know? Every Halloween. Every it's Halloween. Here, and it's always a college kid. You ever notice that? It's always a college kid. It's always Why college is it kid. always a college kid? Wim- male or female. We've had both. 
But yeah, it's always a college kid. It's always a college kid. And they're always like, what? I don't see the problem. What? 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 I'm being tra- transgressive. Whoa. No, you're like, not. Do you have the internet? This shows up every year. You're just being a little shit. Just being a little shit. Okay, so this next one. We always have, we keep having these stories where people with their hearts are in the right place and their heads are right up their asses. Yeah. Um, did you read a while back there was a story about someone who sent a white powder to Hillary Clinton's office? I did. It wasn't anything poisonous, but it was a white powder in an envelope. It could be, yeah. Lots of people have actually forgotten. People take that shit serious these days. Yeah, lots of people have forgotten that after 9-11, we had the anthrax scare. That's a thing that happened. And it wasn't baking soda. So we it was are fucking anthrax. We are a little bit edgy about strange powders being introduced to people who are not aware of it. Yeah. That's why this one was like, really? Oh, you idiot. New York Met Opera canceled after person's ashes tipped into orchestra pit. I would argue that his heart was not in the right place, by the way, because that's not an appropriate place to distribute someone's ashes. He was trying it's to. It's an s- indoor public facility. Yeah. You know where those ashes are going to wind up? The inside of a vacuum cleaner. Yeah. New York Met- City Metropolitan Opera was forced to cancel its Saturday afternoon performance of Guillaume Tell. Am I saying that right? Guillaume? Uh, Guillaume? Guillaume Tell. Uh, Guillaume? Guillaume? Guillaume Tell. I don't. I, I, I speak two yeah, languages. Yeah, Guillaume. I speak two languages English and bad English. I sincerely apologize. So- if I look like an idiot, it's because I am. So William Tell? I believe so. After an audience member sprinkled an unidentified powder, which police believe was cremated ashes, into the orchestra pit. By the way, there's musicians playing down there. They don't want your relatives sprinkled all over them either. Police officials say witnesses heard a man say he was uh, at the opera to spread the ashes of his mentor. (sighs) Though there were no reports of any injuries or bad reactions to the substance, The entire theater was evacuated. The New York Police Department dispatched a special unit to investigate. You don't, because the, if I'm sitting around in public and someone's sprinkling weird powder on me. And New York City does not fuck around with this shit. No, because they were at the epicenter of this shit. 9-11 happened there. Yes. They don't fuck around. Like you walk through Penn Station on a Saturday night. And there's military in full fatigues with assault rifles, mm-hmm. just chilling all the time. Still, 15 years later, New York yeah. City does not fuck around. I... And, but even, if, even without that, this is not an yeah. appropriate place to spread someone's ashes. It's not. Like, you're pouring someone's ashes on an orchestra trying to play music in a public indoor place. They're going to get vacuumed up. That's rude and gross. Yeah, I mean, how is it How is it honoring somebody? Because it's not going in the orchestra pit. It's going on the orchestra. Yeah. You're and then pro- inside a dust buster. Imagine you have to go home and you have to shower dead guy out of your hair. That's not a really, fun. Ash, ash is really tough to get out of hair. Because when it gets wet, it gets like pasty. I was about to ask how you knew that, but then I remembered your father was a firefighter. So, yeah. okay. Because I was about to be like, Tara, what are you... Okay, all right, all right. That's cool. That's cool. That's cool. I get it. I get it. Well, okay. you have to remember, ash isn't dirt. Ash is burned things. Yes. So it gets, like, gummy. And in this case, it's burned person. Right. Gonna wash that man right out and of my hair. when uh, you get cremated remains... There's little bits of bone and stuff in there. Ah, uh, nasty. Jesus Maybe Christ. Maybe teeth? Because some there are parts of human that don't burn. Baconator. Oh, God. The maestro is decomposing. Yeah. Good far side reference. Good one. Bringing that back. Do you remember that far side cartoon? It was awesome. I don't remember that particular one. It was a beautiful one. Was, I love the far side. I miss the far side. We need the far side this year. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, also, I'm a Catholic, and Ash Wednesday, I know well the difficulty trying to get palm, and that's just palm, that's just burned palm, the ash they put yeah. on you on Ash Wednesday, and it's still really difficult to wash off. 
And that's just burned palm. Imagine burned person. Ew, I don't want to. Did What's Keith the f- Richards snort his father's Don't. Ashes? Keith Richards has snorted many things. But I think he snorted his father's ashes. <sighs> Gelly Elfson just said, What's the far side? Oh, honey. Google and rejoice because you, you need it. Oh. Tara's father was a firefighter. Didn't he also set a dog's ass on fire? He yes, did. He did. He did. <laughs> Little known fact, which I actually explained to Dan yesterday as well. Firemen are fucking pyros. <laughs> My dad primarily joined the fire department because he had just come to the country and was building, like, was looking to get involved in the community and meet people and make friends. You get involved in the fire department out of a desire for community service, because your family was all firemen, or because you're a fucking pyro. Anyway, um, so Halloween is Firemen coming Firemen like gone. to solve problems with fire is what I'm saying. So Halloween has come and gone. Mm-hmm. And um, I was very disappointed I did not get any trick-or-treaters. Oh. Because, well, yeah, specifically because uh, I wanted, because in, in part because I ate all the candy. <laughs> God help me, I ate it all. And I know you wanted to answer the door in your Chester Molester costume. <laughs> All right, kids. It wasn't the kids who were going to be freaked out. It was That's the parents. That's my little ponies, right? Chester Molester? Oh, oh, we're going to get letters. Um, But no, what? I was disappointed. I, I should. After reading the story, I'm actually kind of glad nobody showed up at my door. Naked man seeking sex partner strikes out. Did he go trick-or-treating for someone to have sex with him? Because that would be kind of amazing. Seagrove Beach, Florida. A naked man was charged with disorderly intoxication after residents of the Grand Isle condominiums complained about him October 28th. 27-year-old from White Pine, Tennessee, was banging on doors and windows. When deputies arrived, the man was completely naked and appeared to be extremely intoxicated. His speech was slurred and he could not walk straight. He was holding an unopened can of Coors beer, said he didn't know how much he consumed, or where he was staying. He was banging on doors because he was looking for someone to have sexual intercourse with, he told police. His clothes were found in the parking lot. He was... he was dick-or-treating. Dick-or-treating! <laughs> <laughs> Hey! Hey! Someone fuck me! Someone! Someone fuck me! That's a unique approach. Now, on on in his favor, at least he was being you know, truth and advertising up front because he was already stripped down so you could see the goods ahead of time. Right, you knew what you were buying. Right. But on the downside. No one wants to. I mean, all right, think about it. it's the middle of the night. You're at home. You're cozy. You're in your comfy pants. You're flipping through the channels. Knock at the door. You're like, who the fuck could it be at this outer? You open the door. Bang. Penis. You're not yeah. going to be too inclined to go. I mean, uh, that happens around here, but it's usually just Dan. <laughs> So I'm like, oh, okay, hang on. You know the comfy pants. Everybody knows the comfy pants. Once you're in your comfy pants, you ain't doing shit for the rest of the night. With women, it's the second the bra comes off. Like, women have the comfy pants, too. But really, it's if my bra comes off, I'm in for the night. Yeah, we ain't doing... You can call me and tell me Chris Evans is at the Starbucks. And I'm like, I already took my bra off. Fuck you. That's actually not true. I would put my bra back on for Chris Evans. But you take my point. Yeah, it's just it it which you don't want someone coming to your door naked going, hey, I wanna fuck. <laughs> like I didn't throw a bachelor party. <laughs> it's like, you know, some surprises are good. Surprise penises, never good. Never good. 
Yeah, I can't really think of a situation where that'd be good. Even if you're in a relationship, there's always the implicit knowledge that someone else's genitals will be there. So it's not yeah. all, not technically a surprise at that point. It's like, oh, okay, there's right. the pe there's the genitals I was engaged with as part of my relationship. Right. When it's someone else entirely, that's a su no a surprise. Yeah, penis. having a having a dick just sprung on you unawares, no pun intended. <laughs> uh -huh. Not not really an experience no. anyone looks for. I mean that that is at the end of your rope though when you're like. I'm going to find someone to fuck somehow. And I guess he was playing the odds. He's like, if I'm I knock... just going to go door to door. Yeah, if I knock on enough of these doors, someone's going to fuck me. Somebody. That's not how yeah. it works, though. And, like, you answer the door at random times. You think the Jehovah's Witnesses are going to be your worst case scenario. <laughs> <laughs> not a penis, though. Uh, well... Moving along, we've we've all been in a situation, I'm sure, every one of us, like it or not, where we've needed money from our parents. That, yeah. That's sort of been one of those cases. No matter how well you're doing, it, it, you know, you, you don't want money, you still need money from your parents. Yeah. However, there are ways to ask for money from your parents. Many of them are humiliating. This one, however, was actually a crime. Son faked his own kidnapping to get uh. 600 euros from his mother. That's about $660. 600 euro? $600. 20 year old, one year old Spaniard has been arrested for faking his own kidnapping to extort money from his mother to pay a debt. The distraught mother turned to police after receiving ransom demands uh, via message to her mobile phone. She turned up at the police station in Parla, a dormitory town south of Madrid, last Thursday, despite warnings not to go to authorities. She was told to leave 600 euros in cash at a secret location if you want to see your son again and live the rest of your life in peace. Officers immediately left in action following established protocol for kidnappings, but quickly located the 21-year-old walking freely around the town. Under questioning, he admitted he had faked the ordeal because he was desperately short of cash and needed to pay an outstanding debt. Where do we begin? 600 euro. 600 has, euro. Has anyone ever been kidnapped for a ransom of 600 <laughs> euro? That's an oddly specific number, isn't it? It's awfully low. I know, right? Who... Who goes to all the trouble of kidnapping someone and asks for 600 euro? Really cheap kidnappers. Really cheap. So that's that's the first like, problem. That's a kid with low self-esteem. <laughs> he thinks he's only... Mom only chipping... Yeah, mom, mom only chipping this much. You know, then ask for 10,000, then ask for 20, then ask for 50. 600, right. not even a 1,000. Not even an even 1,000. Not even to round that shit up. Like, at least round up. And not only that, he had the audacity not to hide during this kidnap. Just wandering around free. And leaving aside my weird attention to weird details. Mm. That's a horrible fucking thing to do to your mother. Like I know! Your mother <clears throat> physically created you and will worry about you from the second you exit her birth canal to the second one of you dies. She will be worried about you. Yeah, and the, the night... a horrible fucking thing to do to your any, mother. For any normal, balanced parent... <clears throat> in a normal mother-child relationship, the absolute nightmare scenario for any mother is your child is kidnapped. Yeah. That is, that is, you know, not even you dying. You dying is bad. But the nightmare scenario is the kidnapping. Because Someone tried to steal one of my sisters when she was a baby. My parents were at a restaurant where they were at like a diner and the waitress wanted to hold my sister. And next thing you know, my mom saw her running across the parking lot with my sister. How do we always get to one of the, how do you do this? <laughs> and like my mom chased her out into the parking lot and stole my sister back from her. But like someone tried to steal my sister, Carrie. 
And that's the nightmare scenario. My mother, usually a very demure, polite woman, tore across the parking lot and almost killed somebody. <laughs> and years later, do you ever turn to your sister and, and go like, man, I wish that woman ran faster? No comment. <laughs> That is the sister whose ear I ripped open by tugging her earring through her earlobe. So, how do you do this, Tara? Every time you have a you have an anecdote from hell. Every fucking time. I don't know if I'd say from hell, from my childhood, <laughs> or my family's life before I came along. Oh, we got one last one tonight, and it is a doozy. Chalk this, put this one in the I dare you to make less sense category. Is my childhood that bad? They're really upset. Like, I, I yes, I, this is weird I, shit, Tara. I think I had a pretty good childhood. This is weird shit. Okay. <laughs> I mean, my mom got her back. <laughs> I didn't make it out of the parking lot. She's okay. <laughs> No, it's cool, y'all. Mom got her back. It's cool. <laughs> it's cool. Oh. Uh, here's our last one. This one comes to us from Minneapolis, Minnesota. I was just there. I missed I, I missed this. Um let's get the story over here. Woman on meth steals squad car after arrest. High speed chase follows. Now this one's, there are details here. Are we working? Come on, there we go. There are details in the story. We're gonna have to go through. Fire crews. Yeah, this is amazing. All right, 35 year old Alexandria woman is in jail after she allegedly stole a squad car and led police on a high speed chase. Alexandria police say the fire crews and officers were dispatched to a fire alarm and visible spoke at an apartment. Upon arrival, officers saw a small fire burning on the living room floor and quickly put out the fire using an extinguisher. There initially didn't appear to be anyone inside the residence, but officers discovered the tenant, identified as Jennifer Hilliard, entered through the ceiling tiles and was hiding inside the ceiling. Oh, a police. place that was on fire? Yes, police say Hilliard then fell through the ceiling tiles into an adjoining laundry room. She was found with methamphetamine, methamphetamine pipe and a lighter in her possession. She was placed under arrest, handcuffed with her hands behind her back, and placed in the back of a squad car. As authorities continued to deal with the scene, Hilliard managed to free one of her hands from the handcuffs and squeeze her way into the back sliding window. That may That's not, not have hard. been secure. <laughs> Every time. It's, it's not hard. Gaining access to the front section of the squad car. She then drove off with the squad car. Short time later, officers intercepted Hilliard as she was entering uh, Osakis and began to pursue. Before and during the pursuit, Hilliard reached speeds of 120 miles per hour. Holy shit. The pursuit ended, ended when a Minnesota state trooper deployed stop sticks. Hilliard was in... Uh, What's a stop stick? That's like one of those uh, strips with a pop the top. Yeah. Hillard is in custody at the Dakota County Jail pending a court appearance for charges of arson, theft of motor vehicle, fleeing a peace officer, driving while impaired, possessing a controlled substance, reckless driving, and speeding. Because... <laughs> you know they they have GPS on cop cars now. <laughs> yeah, they do. They're, they're going to find you. They're going to find you. They can... My God almighty. Let's unpack this one, shall we? First of all, you've set your own house on fire. Yeah, that's a bad start. So your response is to hide in the ceiling tiles. Which, by the way, if they hadn't responded so quickly, you would have died. You would have died. It's like, oh shit, what do I do? Hide. I mean, I guess you're on meth, so you're <sighs> probably not thinking clearly. But that's, that's a bad plan. You can't hide from fire. No. It will find you. Fire is the best hide and seek player ever. ever. Yeah. It's it does it's fire is not so good at hiding, but it is damn awesome at seeking. And if the fire didn't get you, its best friend smoke will. Yeah, smoke, it's got backup. Fire has backup in the hide and seek game. Um 
I, I just, it, okay, so that's first. Then you fall through the ceiling while the cops, can you imagine the police officers are like, oh, we don't know what the scene's going on here. Maybe we should call some, boom! Yeah, because ceiling tiles don't bear that much weight. And just imagine every eye in the room turns to look at you and you're like, oh, Gord? So, I guess. Thanks for putting out my fire. Oh, and then after you've already been arrested, after you tried to hide from fire, you're like, you know what? I can fit through that hole. This woman is like a snake. She's like, do you remember, I'm gonna do the same thing I did last week, the old X-Files episode about the guy, oh God, what was it? <laughs> it was something to do with bile, but he could stretch himself to fit through like the tiniest of holes. His name was Tombs. You and X Files, Dara. You and the fuck. It was a great show. It was just like season nine. I bet I could fit through that hole. I bet I can get in there. Eugene Victor Tombs. Boom. Who who looks at that and says, "I'm gonna go through there." Challenge accepted. Challenge accepted. You know who? Someone on meth. <laughs> And then driving at 120 miles an hour in a cop car. Yeah. This is just like bad decision after bad decision after bad decision after. You just like doubling down every single time, doubling down on the bad call. Every single time. I mean, math. This is why, you know what? Meth is not a good drug. No. Did you just hear marijuana is going to be legal in, in tons of places soon? Places you can drive to. Yeah, but don't drive on the marijuana. Don't drive on the marijuana, but you can drive to go get the marijuana and it's And then go home and then smoke the marijuana. Yeah. And then stay home. So get your munchies first. You can do the meth. You can do the caffeine. You can do the alcohol. It's all fine. Why do you want to do the meth? Why do you want to do the meth? Why do you want to do methamphetamine? I honestly, like, there's no upside to meth. Like, there making, isn't. Making it could kill you. Making it Doing could kill it you. Doing it makes you do stupid, crazy shit and ruins your skin and your teeth fall out. Yeah. So but there's no upside. No. None. I don't understand this drug. I don't. I mean, it, for, for fuck's sake, even cocaine doesn't wreck your teeth. Yeah. I'm defending cocaine now. What's it wrong with me? It will burn a hole right through your septum. It will. It will. It will. But it won't ruin your teeth. Yeah. I'm trying to find the, I'm trying to find a bright side here because, Jesus Christ, meth. What the hell is with meth? Yeah, I don't, I don't get meth as a concept. Everything about it seems bad. Cause as evidenced by this lady. Yeah. Not the lady in the picture, though. That's a newscaster. That's not who they're talking about. That's just a video that got paused. That's not, that's not her. But that is just, it's just a not, meth leads to, that's the first thing we learned this week. Meth leads to really, really bad decisions. And really great adventures. I wouldn't call that an adventure. I bet she would. You know what she's going to call it? Jail time. A nickel in the pen. Yep. Yeah. Nickel in the pen. Oh, don't do that. It's not, a, it's not a good drug. It's a bad drug. We have old drugs. We have legal drugs. They're okay. They're not yeah. good. You know, no one. I don't think anyone ever got high on marijuana, set a fire, hit from the fire, Stole a cop car, drove at 120 miles an hour, got stopped by stops. I don't think anyone's ever done that. I don't I think you're... someone's going to tweet you a link to a story of exactly that. I don't think it's possible. Is that pedantic. I don't think it's possible to drive 120 miles on marijuana. <laughs> I think if you like, if you're going like at 10 miles an hour, you think this is too fast. I'm gonna slow down. <laughs> I can't fucking slow down. This is, I, 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 this is way too fast for me. No, I'm going too fast. We've learned that you can't go door to door for sex. You just can't. Dick or treating is not a thing. <laughs> Dick or treating, not a thing. Don't make it a thing. It's not a thing. We've learned 
don't drop, don't dump strange powders on on people you don't know. Stop that it. Great? That was Grady. He's he's got. I put a doorstop to keep him right behind the green screen. He's fucking with it. Don't do that. You know I'm better. Gonna I'm gonna do the thing. You know better. I'm gonna do the thing. Little shithead. So yeah, don't dump strange powders on people. No. This this is not a good time. To, it was never don't, a good time. To, don't dump anything on people that you don't know yeah. that aren't expecting it. And ashes. Maybe that are aren't expecting it because sometimes that's funny as a prank. But yeah, not like strangers. No. We've learned that some people still don't appear to know what blackface is. After this happens every single year. Like, if you want to be Nick Fury for Halloween, that's fine. It, comic purists don't at me. I know Nick Fury used to be white. I know that. Just, well, you have two flavors of Nick Fury to you know choose what from. I'm about to, you know the Nick Fury I'm about to talk about. Get off my back. You have two flavors of Nick Fury. Marvel Cinematic Universe Nick Fury for Halloween. That's fine. Just wear the black turtleneck and the leather coat and the eye patch. Everybody's going to know who you are. <sighs> They're going to get it. We've learned that if you need money from your parents, it's better to ask than fake your own kidnapping. Don't torture the money out of them. Yeah, I mean, why would you? Especially considering she was very upset. So this yeah, your mother obviously she was very upset. She might put you through hell, but she's probably going to help you. You don't have to fucking say if I fake a kidnapping, I don't get blamed for for getting money from my. No, that's not how that works. Don't do that. And finally, we've learned yet again. Why do I have to keep saying this? A gun is not a remote control for life. No, it is not. It's not something you should point at children or anybody. It's one of those things, yeah, but Especially I want- Especially over a fucking 12 by 14 slab of goddamn shitting cardboard. <laughs> cardboard! Yeah. You will win in the short term, sure. But if you're in the long term, you're going to go jail. You can't just, you'll do what I want you to do. Yeah, until the cops get here, then you'll do what they want you to do. And even if you don't go to jail, you're forever known as the fucking any cock who had to pull a gun on a bunch of children. <laughs> Where did you get that? What? That is of any cock. I made that up. That is the best thing! That is the new thing! Any cock! I like that! That's the new thing? That is the new one, yes. You heard it here first. Any cock. <laughs> that's that's the new that that you can take that one to the bank, kids. We're we're we we are streets ahead. Any cock. 